Jenny Martinez. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk to you about real briefly about my pathway of becoming a registered nurse. I got my associate's degree in nursing in 1991. This was a two-year program I completed at Quinnipiac College in Hampton, Connecticut. In 2001, I uh, received my Bachelor of Science in Nursing, which was a four-year program. I completed that at the University of Texas Pan American here in Edinburgh. In 2006, I um, completed my Master of Science in Nursing. This was a three-year program also completed at the University of Texas Pan American. And just recently, this year, I completed my Doctor of Nursing Practice, which was a three- to four-year program. This was an online program and was completed at Grand Canyon University in Phoenix, Arizona. During the time um, when I was getting my associate's degree, there was also some funding, some student loans and grants that I was able to do. And that's what helped me the most when I was getting my associate's degree in nursing was the grants and took advantage of those programs. Um, I have a short video here um, that I'd like for you to see. Um, this is the Fun Facts of uh, Demonstration Simulation Lab, UCLA. Good morning. How are you? Good to see you this Hi. Do you morning. have the discharge instructions? Yeah, yeah we're just, I'm just going to pass off, and Nora's going to be taking care of the discharge instructions. I'll Come be in. the nurse yeah. taking care of you today. We're going to start an extra line on you. Here at UCLA School of Nursing, simulation is a very important piece of the training. It takes a student out of a lecture hall and puts them more into a clinical setting. We have mannequins that have ability to mimic a lot of different patient aspects. They're able to breathe, their chest rises, they have coughing, wheezing, lung sounds, crackles. A lot of the higher tech mannequins actually sweat. We can change their pupil sizes, and by computer we also can change any vital sign similar to a real patient. It's a way to get the students more engaged and to get those clinical experiences uh, such that they don't have to actually practice on real patients. ICU simulations are to mimic the environment in an ICU to add some extra stress to add some extra equipment that the nurses have now been trained on and then depict some kind of event that will be typical for an ICU and see how they can react to that event and intervene to make the patient better. There's a lot of instances where things happen right away, you have to respond right away. It's been able to help me practice my emotions, help me practice how I deal with things. What's great about simulation is that the student actually gets immersed into a situation. When they get to the ICU environment, it's not foreign to them. The leadership simulation that we do is done for senior students who are nearing graduation. We have five patient beds with mannequins simulating an actual clinical floor. You come in and your nurse will give you maybe like a fast report. They have to go somewhere. He's a 60-year-old male that was admitted several days ago for an exacerbation of his asthma. You go to your patient rounds and you go, first patient, okay, you check on them. How are you feeling? Like dizzy? Yeah. But then you hear like a bell from another, another room. Okay, I'll let her know. I'll be quick, okay. The goal is to give them a little bit of stress because we want them to be able to think as a nurse and to be able to think on their feet. So Mr. Salter, you're having um, very low blood pressure. It can certainly be that chaotic during the day and that's why we have this for practice to put us in those situations so we can learn how to think, what to do. After each of the simulations, it's really important to come together and have a debriefing. The whole point of the debriefing really is for them to reflect on what they were thinking when they did different things, and then if they would do anything different, how would they do it different? It's really helped us um, boost our confidence and also helped apply everything we learned in the books to what we see in the real world. The goal of simulation here at UCLA is to send students out into the clinical world more prepared and better able to tackle some of the more difficult types of cases that they're going to come upon. And next I'm going to talk about a day in my shoes. Um, my career pathway led me to becoming an emergency room nurse and that was most of my nursing career before I changed my focus to breast cancer. So a typical day as an emergency room nurse as you would expect is non-stop challenges which I really, it was great. I loved being an emergency room nurse. But now, I'm, the typical day for me as a breast center coordinator, I make a lot of phone calls to physician offices, contact patients, and tracking their progress um, from imaging to survivorship. Coordination of care is a must in order to ensure that our, our patients are receiving the most appropriate care in a timely manner. And the type of physicians I get to work with are medical oncologists, radiation oncologists, primary care physicians, breast surgeons, pathologists, tumor registry staff, 
an oncology nurse navigator. The most important skill and the ability here is to be to have effective communication skills. So some helpful tips for you for a career pathway is always follow your passion. Follow those who have the most positive influence on you and know that you can always and will make a difference once you set your mind to that. Always keep your energy and enthusiasm fueled by your desire to succeed. <clears throat> Before I close, I just want to talk a little bit about compassion and how compassion and nursing go hand in hand. Now, when you think of the word compassion, think about how does that make you feel? Compassion is our inner daily lives. We practice compassion in one form or fashion. And ask yourself, when was the last time I showed true compassion? So what is compassion? Compassion is a holistic understanding of a problem or the suffering of another uh, with a commitment to act to solve the problem or alleviate suffering. Understanding a problem or suffering of another one, uh, another person, can happen instantaneously or it can develop over a period of time. But the most important thing you need to know about compassion is it involves a commitment to act. And this is what distinguishes compassion from empathy. And empathy is understanding what another person is experiencing. So the compassion understanding isn't enough. Compassion means actually doing something to help.